Good afternoon. I'm Canon Lauren Holder, one of the clergy here at the Cathedral of St. Philip, and this is a midday meditation for Thursday, September 17th, the year 2020. I'm going to begin with a collect for Times of Change, written by a priest named Linda Smith Criddle. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Assist us, Lord, in living hopefully into the future. In the face of change, help us to set unnecessary fears aside and to recognize our potential for creative response. Help us to develop a reasonable optimism when confronted by the new and to guard against our own defensiveness. Be with us as we remember and celebrate former times and keep us from unreasonable yearning for them, which takes us from the work you have set before us in our time. All this we ask in the name of your child, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today's reading is from the book of Jonah. When God saw that the people of Nineveh, what the people of Nineveh did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed God's mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. But this was very displeasing to Jonah, and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord and said, Oh Lord, is this not what I said while I was still in my own country? That is why I fled to Tarshish at the beginning, for I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and ready to relent from punishing. And now, O oh Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, Is it right for you to be angry? Then Jonah went out of the city and sat down east of the city and made a booth for himself there. He sat under it in the shade, waiting to see what would become of the city. The Lord God appointed a bush and made it come up over Jonah to give shade over his head to save him from his discomfort. So Jonah was very happy about the bush. But when dawn came up the next day, God appointed a worm that attacked the bush so that it withered. When the sun rose, God prepared a sultry east wind and the sun beat down on the head of Jonah so that he was faint and asked that he might die. He said, it is better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about the bush? And he said, yes, angry enough to die. Then the Lord said, you are concerned about the bush for which you did not labor and which you did not grow. It came into being in a night and perished in a night. And should I not be concerned about Nineveh, that great city in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand from their left? and also many animals. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's reflection from Jonah is one of the readings appointed for this coming Sunday, but I'm reasonably sure that neither George, who is preaching at our virtual online services, nor the Dean, who is going to be preaching at our in-person services, which if you don't know about that, you can look it up online, I don't think either of them will be preaching on Jonah this week. And so I thought that I would use it in today's meditation. Some of you know that during normal times, we keep printed copies of the upcoming lectionary all around the church building, collects included, so that people can reference and reflect on the texts as they begin their meetings or meet with one another to talk about whatever, they can look at the upcoming lectionary. We allow ourselves to marinate in the lectionary before even showing up to church on Sunday. And no matter who is preaching, the sermon is always better if you've been reflecting on the readings in advance. So today we are looking at Jonah, but we're also looking at Jonah because it's just a fun story. It's a great story, especially for parents of toddlers or parents of teenagers. It's also a great story for children of childish parents. 
Yes, Jonah is a story that sounds like childish whining, which is what makes it so very relatable. We've all heard Jonah's and we've all been Jonah's at different points in time. You know the story. God tells Jonah to go to Nineveh and to preach redemption and Jonah has no desire to do so. And so he gets on a boat heading the opposite direction. He gets thrown overboard and eaten by a big fish. He gets vomited up on the shore and finally he says, okay, fine, I'll go and I'll preach to these people in Nineveh and he does so and it must have been one heck of a sermon because they all repent and turn to God. But does this make Jonah happy? No. Does their salvation please him? No. He is mad, mad, mad. He says, I knew that you are a gracious God, merciful and slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, ready to relent from punishing. Harump. And then to underscore just how devastated and dramatic Jonah is feeling, he says to God, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. It is so hard to see people that we want so badly to hate, to receive grace and to love. My cousin, who is a youth minister, texted me this last Sunday because the youth that she was with were talking about forgiveness. And they were asking if all sin is the same in the sight of the Lord. Well, we talked about how all sin is different because they have different outcomes. Different sins impact different people differently. Yes, sin is different. And yet, no sin is too great or too big for God's redemption. And while it feels like this should be a message of hope, Sometimes it's not. Sometimes we want to be like Jonah and say, but those people don't deserve forgiveness. Those people don't deserve compassion. No, no, no. I sometimes wonder what it's like to be God, watching the people that you lovingly created in your own image, watching them do amazing things and also watching them screw up in the worst ways. I'm not God and neither are you, which is why there are some things that are hard for me to imagine forgiving. I can't look at all the children of God the same way that God does, but I do promise to seek and serve Christ in all persons the best I can every day. Some days I feel extra Jonah-y. Maybe you have those days too. Maybe today is one of those days. I think that's why we have stories like Jonah's story in our Bible, why they are holy scripture in our tradition. We need to know that even prophets like Jonah, who helped save one of the most evil civilizations of all time, even prophets like Jonah can have terrible, horrible, no good, very bad days. And we need to know that God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love, and ready to relent from punishing, no matter what. Amen. I invite your intercessions this day for what and for whom do we pray? I am praying in Thanksgiving that we get to gather as a community, some of us, this Sunday in person. If you don't know already, we are going to be having in-person worship. That um, Those gatherings have several different kinds of um, restrictions to keep us as safe as possible. And so if you want to attend, you will need to register if registration hasn't filled up already, and um, you can read all of the guidelines about how we are gathering safely on our website. So I am praying for our worship together this weekend. 
I'm also praying for all who are overwhelmed by natural disasters, for forest fires and hurricanes, and for all the people who are rushing in to assist those in severe need. I'm praying for all of our healthcare providers and first responders and for their families. I'm praying for all who are sick and all who are dying and all who love them. Pray for healing not just of our bodies, but also of our souls, that we would be forgiven and that we would forgive one another. And let us pray together the words our Savior Christ has taught us. Our Lord, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen.